welcome, welcome to October Gallery and this Saturday's event. Um, as, as, as Gerard Horton has just told you, we will hope to reach Eddie. I'm going to try and call him to see whether the internet connection works in Kinshasa. Oh. And, um, but I would like to welcome you to um, Gabriela Salgado, who has been working with us on this exhibition. Gabriela is an art consultant and advisor and curator, and she has known Eddie for several years. And Gerard Horton, who um, is um, director of special projects at October Gallery, and who's been also writing about Eddie. So I think it will be a very interesting conversation. It will take about more than five minutes. Um, and after that, we'll have 15 minutes of questions and answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, can, can you get me here? OK. Um, first of all, Gabriella has worked for a few years now with, with Eddie. And I thought just to ask you first, Gabriella, just about how you came across him and how you began to work with him. How are you found him? First of all, hi, and thank you for coming. Um, I met uh, Eddie's work first, not Eddie, in Dakar and Senegal, where I was working for the Biennale before the last one that is happening now. Um, and uh, I went to visit some exhibitions in the off of the Biennale, and there was a, a pavilion where, which had an exhibition of Congolese artists, young Congolese artists, organized by Bill Kuleni, who is this um, artist from Brazzaville, from the other Congo, who is uh, doing this kind of mentorship, uh, has an initiative of um, gathering young artists from uh, both sides of the river, so from Brazzaville and uh, from the Kinshasa side and creating a kind of um, atmosphere of support and um, it's, it's not a school but mentorship I would say. She had organized this, she selected artists and took them to the car to, um, to show what was happening in terms of young Congolese art. And uh, I looked around, there were about 10 artists in the show and I got magnetized by Eddie's work. I was like, you know, this is the best thing in this show. I was very impressed. But they were very small paintings. They were small, and uh, there was even a, a skateboard painted with some figures. At the time, he was still using objects from popular culture and painting on top. So it was very different to this. Mm -hmm. But I saw the work, I took some pictures, at the time I was writing for Sachi for his exhibition, I don't know if you've seen it, this exhibition called Pangea, where he put together Latin American and African artists. So this is my subject, this is what I do because I'm Latin American and I also feel in my heart very African. And for me that was an opportunity to, to write and to get to know these artists. And he said, before I left, he said, when you are in the car, please look around for artists because the next edition of Pangea needs more young blood. And I sent Eddie's pictures to him, and he said, I want this, immediately. So he bought some paintings, which he showed, he showed in Nigeria. And that was the first time that his paintings were seen in Europe, because he hadn't shown them in Europe before. And that was last year. So everything happened very quick, until we get to this moment. We were surrounded by these majestic, large canvases he's been working on for months. And this format is, is the first time he uses this big format. So everything is very fresh and very new. Yeah. I think I think Elizabeth had seen the, his work in the in the such exhibition and, and was fascinated by it, but she couldn't imagine that this was going to happen. There's been a huge change in fact, Absolutely. both of scale and of subject. Now, how do how do you think an artist goes through those kinds of developmental processes in such a short time? Well, our colleague Eve, who seems to have gone he's, he's around somewhere. Okay. <laughs> yes, he, if, I, if you were in the opening, he gave a wonderful speech um, about Congo. He's Congolese himself, knows the culture very well. He's a cultural writer, so he was talking about um, the situation, the, the situation, the development types of arts that uh, historically developed in the country, and. Um, he touched a little bit on. Do, can we? Can we? This. I don't know. Some of you will know basically, but can we run very quickly through 
a quick development of Congolese history. I won't give you a nice historical just, just, just because it's too boring. But basically, what is important for me, what was very symbolic for a start, is that this exhibition, the first day of this exhibition, the 30th of June, was the day of independence of the Congo, yeah. which was a very, very much um, waited for independence. Because as you must have read about or seen, it was one of the worst, more cruel and more devastating colonizations in the world. So when the, uh, Belgium granted, they say, independence, but when actually when the Congolese gained independence from from Belgium, in 1960, uh, was in 1960. They, it was celebrated as Independence Day. They still they still celebrate as Independence Day, although there is a lot of cynicism about it these days. Um, on the 30th of June. So that is just for a start. Um, of course, I, you might know that Patrice Lumumba was uh, the independent hero, was an intellectual and uh, professional, I believe he was a lawyer, who uh, spearheaded the independence project. And he was betrayed very quickly by the forces, the army, that was allied with uh, mining interests, um, global and Congolese in Katanga, which is extremely rich in minerals, still being victimized in Congo because of their riches. So there is the curse and the and the and the wealth together. Um, so that made Lumumba's life very short. Lumumba was killed, uh, tortured, and killed, disappeared because his body was never found. A few months after independence, um, and uh, and then Mobutu came to power, who was uh, one of his first allies in his his army um, arm, his his hand in the army, betrayed the cause completely and became a dictator. Who we all know about Mobutu. Mobutu was he was saying the other day, and he will be here hopefully for you to ask questions to an expert because I'm not Congolese. But um, he um, implemented what other African countries, West African countries, implemented after independence, which was this kind of, in Congo, was called retour à l'authenticité, the, the, the return to authenticity, the, the, the enhancing of values that were uh, of the country and pre-colonial in order to re-establish themselves as nations, or establish themselves as nations, because they were nations before. They were just kingdoms and groups of people gathered in, in places. So Mobutu did that in, in culture. We're going to talk exclusively about culture, maybe because I don't know about sports and it's complex. The other day was a complex, but by um, somehow um, supporting and uh, funding a lot of initiatives that had to do with creating uh, structures for artists and buying art and promoting them, etc. He used that as propaganda, of course, as well. And uh, he put uh, a lot of emphasis in the popular uh, school of painting of Kinshasa, uh, the likes of Sherry Sambash, Ray Chanin, who are very big celebrities in Congolese painting, everybody knows them. And featured recently, this is Eve, thank God you're here, we can ask you questions later. Um, these paintings that I'm mentioning now were exhibited recently in an exhibition called Beauté Congo at the Fondation Cartier in Paris, which is a very controversial exhibition, very, very, uh, which I visited with Eddie actually. And um, anyway, this, this school of painting of Kinshasa comes out of a totally different uh, way of making art than this. And I tell you, I mean, why? The, the school of painting from Kinshasa uh, is popular painting that relates more to cartoon language and, and graphic design, to uh, advertising, to popular culture. So Shai Samba and Shai Shana and all this, this group of artists develop these paintings that you would, if you see them, you recognize them immediately. There is a lot of text on them, like cartoons. There are references to current politics, very, very activist, the paintings, very activist against the propagation of AIDS and the campaigns of the government to avoid talking about it, etc., etc. So they are very important and very interesting, but it belongs to another generation. He, he was born much later, and these painters were uh, active in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 
some of them are still alive and still painting, but they are of another generation. I think that he, might be John. I just, think he's probably there. He might be the spirit. Yes, he's not there. Okay. okay. Then, so, so maybe you just move that front. Yeah. Well, that's good. The artist is here. <laughs> We've been just saying how fitting that is, particularly that picture, we'll, and we'll then the screen in front of it. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Imagine the kind of um, empathy. Um, this doesn't work. Do you have a? Do you have a? Do you have a? Do you have a? Allô, Eddie, ça va? Bonjour, tu nous vois On est à la galerie. Oui, je vous vois, oui. Et si ton public Can we see him Can we... Uh, Est-ce qu'on peut te voir You need to find the public. Oui, bien sûr. Voilà. On profite. Si tu te recoules un peu. Ah, 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 merci. Qu'est-ce qu'il est beau. Il n'y a pas la même chose. Et derrière vous, il y a aussi une peintures. Oui, c'est ça. Un procès, hein Oui. Alors, on vient de discuter un petit peu euh, l'histoire de la peinture en Congo et on, on, on vient de connecter. Alors, je voulais te donner la bienvenue à Londres, te demander qu'est-ce que tu euh, ressens par rapport à voir cette étoile à l'exposition à Londres à ce moment. Ouais. On va traduire la question d'abord, ok? So, so him, um, Eddie, welcome. And what do you think about the fact that your paintings are here in London? And you're, you're in the middle of a, a big friend in a big gallery. Alors, comment comment ça te fait euh, sentir? Euh, je dirais un petit mot. Pour moi, c'est un grand plaisir de euh, faire une exposition euh, solo. Je dirais c'est ma première exposition solo euh, dans une galerie et puis euh, à l'étranger, à Londres. Londres est quand même une très grande ville d'art contemporain. Et pour moi, je suis très honoré et je remercie euh, toute l'équipe de Hauteur Galerie pour euh, la réalisation de cette exposition. Et euh, merci beaucoup à toi, Gabriela, merci à Yves. Donc, ça me tient au cœur, je suis puis, euh, très, très, très content. So, it's a great honor to be um, in the, uh, a gallery in London. He's been in the London Gallery before, but he's really happy to be in the October Gallery. A big thanks to Gabriela, a big thanks to Yves, and a huge welcome to everybody. He feels honored. Also honored to be in London, which is a very important city for contemporary oh, art, yeah. he said. Et une autre question, après on te laisse aller, parce que sinon ça va compliquer les choses. Mais on voulait te demander euh, peut-être de, de nous dire euh, comment était la lettre. Les voies principales, qu'est-ce qu'il faut qu faire Qu'est-ce qu que tu penses que c'est le plus important de discuter par rapport à ton travail, à ta peinture, à toi, tant qu'artiste congolais, jeune dans ce moment, moment qu'est-ce que tu voudrais que ce soit on discute ici dans cet environnement What should we be discussing here today What would you like to discuss I'm asking Ok, ça ça me fait énormément plaisir de parler plus de mon expérience surtout dans, dans une ville comme Kinshasa pas mal des étapes que j'ai vécues pas mal des influences que j'ai dit à, à avoir dans ma vie 
Et euh, je pense que euh, ça a beaucoup affecté aussi mon travail, euh, euh, mon entourage et lieu où j'habite. Euh, donc je verrai bien si on pouvait parler, je peux parler plus euh, de ça. Okay, don't so, in fact, he's saying that he wants really to talk about his life in Kinshasa, the, the various stages he's going through, and wants those to be part of the discussion um, of, of the moment. Yeah? Okay. De la ville, de ta vie en ville, de ta culture Oui, bien sûr, bien sûr. Euh, je pense que Kinshasa, c'est quand même une ville euh, très, 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 très euh, je dirais, compliquée. Mais c'est euh, une ville que j'aime bien parce que euh, je trouve ça très ordinaire. Je trouve que c'est une ville euh, très, très inspirante. Et puis, euh, les gens sont tellement très ouverts dans, à notre culture. C'est vrai que euh, les gens à Kinshasa euh, n'arrivent pas à accepter leur propre culture, mais ils sont plus facilement euh, fascinés par d'autres cultures. Et euh, ça, je trouve ça très, très, très intéressant, la manière dont les Congolais, en particulier les Kinois, s'approprient des autres cultures et des autres. Et euh, pour moi, ça, ça finance même tant beaucoup mon travail. Et euh, c'est très important. Souvent, les gens me posent beaucoup de questions par rapport à, à l'esthétique. C'est mon travail. Euh, je pense que je joue beaucoup avec cette esthétique parce que euh, je vis dans, dans une ville où des gens sont plus focalisés à l'image. Les gens aiment bien l'image, ils aiment bien l'élégance, ils aiment tout ce qui est beau en fait. Alors pour moi, c'est euh, aussi une façon pour moi d'approcher tous ces gens-là à Kinshasa. C'est aussi une façon pour moi de mettre euh, suffisamment une empreinte en fait, de ma vie dans mon travail. En fait. On va traduire okay, tout okay, ça. C'est okay. 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 complexe. Il met beaucoup de choses là-dedans. Mais il dit que, en fait, les gens à Kinshasa aujourd'hui ont well, deux idées. Une, les gens à Kinshasa approprient d'autres cultures. Et donc, l'idée est que. Kinshasa is full of this place, it's a place which is just grabbing from different kinds of cultures and putting them together in an idiosyncratic whole of some sort. So he's very interested, therefore, and there are two points, I'm going to lose the second one, um, but uh, help, 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 help with, the, with the second idea. He's talking about the elegance and the it, that's right. and the idea, and the idea that people in Kinshasa are very, very visually conscious. And that one of the ways he wanted to interact with people over there is to use this aesthetic component of his own work to, to actually attract people to the idea of culture. These cultures are, if aesthetically presented, then people will at least look at it and start to think about it. But also the fact that he's inspired by their own elegance and their, their own, own sense elegance. of style. Yes, yes, oh. yes. So it's to do with style. Yeah. Yes. Tu veux ajouter quelque chose d'autre par rapport à Kinshasa, à ta vie là-bas, ta culture? Oui, je pense que je me bien à ce qui je sais que j'ai un problème de connexion. Euh, S'il y a des questions, je peux répondre par rapport à ce que j'ai déjà dit. Okay. Comme ça, ça me permettrait de répondre à des questions. Okay. Yeah. Um, et dis-moi, j'ai une question. Est-ce que, est que tu peux nous dire un peu de... Parce que maintenant, on parle de Kinshasa. Um, mais, et c'est une très grande ville. Mais, mais en, fait, en fait, vous avez fait une, une, um, un passage dans un autre monde entièrement pour faire toutes ces euh, peintures, oui, n'est-ce pas Donc, est-ce que, est que, est que vous pouvez nous dire un peu de ce que ça faisait d'aller dans le nord-est pour voir ces gens, les Mangbetu, vos impressions quand vous êtes arrivé là-bas Ok, so I wanted to, just to ask him to um, tell us a little bit about, he's talked about Kinshasa as a, as a place from which he starts, but I want to know a little bit about when he gets to the Mangbetu place, which is way up in the northeast, a completely different world from where he comes from, from where he lives, what were his first impressions when he got there? And I want him just to give us some ideas about this place, which is another place that he's going to put into his art. Allez-y. Première fois que j'ai sorti de Kinshasa au Congo. Et euh, arrivé là-bas, j'ai été quand même très impressionné. Ça m'avait beaucoup étonné parce que c'est vraiment une autre vie, c'est vraiment une autre façon de voir les choses par rapport à Kinshasa. Les gens là-bas, ils ont leur manière de s'habiller, de voir les choses. 
même dans, au centre-ville de, de Kisangani. Et pour moi, je, je me suis, ça m'a plus poussé à me poser beaucoup de questions. Pourquoi cette différence Alors qu'on euh, voilà, est tous des Congolais. Et euh, en même temps, ça me ça, ça dérangeait même côté, euh, côté politique. Parce que ça m'a ça permis à voir comment est-ce que euh, la politique fonctionne aussi euh, en dehors des Kinshasa. Et aussi, euh, il faut savoir que c'est euh, aussi très, très, très différent, surtout euh, dans les terrières euh, du pays, de voir euh, toutes euh, ces, ces exploitations des, euh, des l'or. Parce que la route que j'ai prenée avait euh, beaucoup, euh, beaucoup de rebelles. Oui. Mais voilà, je n'avais pas eu trop peur. J'ai affronté euh, toutes ces, toutes ces routes-là avec tous ces rebelles. Et pour moi, parler même avec eux, parler euh, de mon projet, parler avec eux sur euh, ces peuples manoués, tout sur mon travail, ça m'a ça, ça permis en fait de découvrir pas mal de choses, la manière dont euh, ils aperçoivent les choses, la manière dont ils aperçoivent euh, les communs, ou euh, la manière dont ils aperçoivent euh, l'art. Pour moi, c'était euh, vraiment une expérience euh, qui m'a fait vraiment encore grandir quoi, sur euh, la connaissance de, de mon pays. Quoi. Complex, complex. Um, so I was completely surprised. This is the first time I've ever, I've, I've ever left Kinshasa, um, and it really struck me very forcibly. Um, and he's saying that he, as he got there, he was able to talk with people from a from, from a very different background. They were both Congolese, but he was Congolese from the from the big vill, uh, the, big, the big city. They're Congolese from a completely different part. It was very difficult as he was going out there. He was going through areas that were controlled by rebels. There are many, many local um, pro pro problems around mining, lots of, lots of armed militia and so on. He was going through all these kinds of difficulties to get there. But that when he got there, the conversation was really, well, first of all, they, they dressed completely differently from the way that the, the, uh, the, 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 the Kinwa people in, in the big city dress. Um, they have completely different clothes and things, but that in talking to them, he was fascinated. It made him grow up, he said, or, or he, it, it made his spirit, if you like, develop, to realize that they were Congolese, he was Congolese, and yet they were talking about the same sorts of things, the political situation and so on, from very different perspectives, but that he put together a conversation about those things. I have a question. Qu'est-ce qu'ils sont, euh, quelle était leur réaction par rapport à, à la façon dont tu, euh, tu les représentes Ils ont vu des photos de ton travail, est-ce qu'ils savent comment tu les représentes So he, she's asking. Oui, oui, bien sûr. Sorry, I'm going to translate. She's just asking. I'm asking if they got to see the way he represents them, so if, yes. he, if they saw pictures of the paintings and what was their reaction knowing that he was painting them. Yeah. yeah. Oui. oui, bien sûr, ils étaient, euh, ils étaient très émus. Je pense que j'ai eu à me confronter à un grand débat entre les, les jeunes et les vieillards. Mmh. Et euh, quand j'ai montré mon travail, les jeunes étaient très, très contents, très fiers d'être, très fiers de, de leur culture et euh, la manière dont j'ai euh, la valorise. Mais voilà, euh, ces débats m'ont permis en fait, de discuter aussi avec des, 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 des jeunes comme moi, de leur montrer euh, que bon, voilà, c'est vrai qu'on vivant à l'époque de la mondialisation, l'époque moderne, mais je pense que euh, c'est très important de s'accepter aussi, d'accepter ta propre. Et les, et les, les gens de l'Union, pardon. Nous avons juste perdu. Nous avons juste perdu. Oui, tu, tu reviens. Attends. Je vais couper un peu ma caméra pour voir si ça va bien. Donc il disait qu'il y avait une grande différence entre les jeunes et les jeunes. Les jeunes personnes dans ce endroit, dans cette place, dans cette zone de Mangbetu, étaient en fait très fiers de voir leur propre culture être donnée de valeur et ainsi de suite. Um, I want to hear if the, how we can describe that difference between the way the young people and the elders might be seeing it. But if we well, get them back. They appreciate it. How, how long was he there? How long did yeah. he stay in Mangbetu? Yeah, how long, how long he he only one, two days, something really? very oh, short. Very short. Yeah, 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 so yeah. it was to reinforce things that he had sort of learned about them elsewhere? Or? No, I suspect that he was learning as, as when he went, he was really okay. learning about I don't think he knew too much before he it's not. It's not that he never saw Mangwetu before because there are many in Kinshasa and in fact 
Many people migrated to the city in the 70s, 80s, from I mean, constantly no, old cities. City. They moved to the city to yeah. study and work. But they were um, quite deculturated already. They were not, uh, you know, they didn't have the elongated heads. Only the old people remain with the elongated heads. And one of them is photographed, and you can see it in the catalog. He took a lot of portraits of this group. It's a very small group of elders. They are like 10 or probably less than 15 survivors with the elongated head, at least in that particular community. This, I don't this know is if another place. The one of the photos that Eddie took. And it's from a series of photos which is called basically Last of the Long Bits. He appears offline, I think he's yeah. lost the connection. Could will you, we leave it? Yeah, yeah, uh, until comes he comes, back, comes back, back, we can talk. But at least we could see him. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, could, you, could you just go on with that? And just let's pick up on that, maybe. Yeah. yeah. The man went to. Uh, yeah. We were talking about the um, the. The idea of stigmatization and so on. Is yes, the moment? idea of going there. Man went to for him was a negative word because when he was growing up in Kinshasa, he told me that he heard that that word as an insult around the city, which meant a uh, big empty head, yeah? Um, uh, so he was telling me that for him until the moment he started focusing on, on this community, um, there was a sense of shame attached to it. They, as I said, they went to the city a lot. He mentioned that they, they were arriving in the 70s and 90s. They were coming to study in the city after independence, you know, where the people were displacing and going to the city also to work, of course. But uh, many people studied in the city, got degrees, and went back to the community. And some of the people, older people he met um, in, in the community had lived in Kinshasa and were telling him how marginalized they felt and how um, hostile the city was to their culture. So they, they, there wasn't such thing as respect. And that, that is why he said, you know, the way the Congolese have more respect and interest in cultures coming from outside and our own cultures. There is a kind of shame. There's not only in the Congo, but I've seen a lot in West Africa of tradition. There is a lot of denial of tradition because there's been this brainwash through education that, you know, modernity and progress and being global and Western is better than being yourself. So this is the core subject in his paintings. I think that what pushes this very young man, which for me is incredible, you know, I'm full of hope when when see people like him, he's only 25, but he's already looking into the past, honoring the past, trying to recover, in a very political way, recover the identity of his own country and, and the pride of being Congolese, being African, which is very important if you want to progress. Um, so he's very aware of this brainwashing of westernization that happened in the Congo, which is not always the case with young people. He also is critical of that. He said, going back, for instance, to the paintings, that the fact that he's incorporating technology in a critical way. Technology is there to help us. Of course, he's very grateful to the internet. He's been studying a lot through the internet, and he's been accessing a lot of stuff on the internet. But on the other hand, he says people live on their phones. They don't care about their environment. They just think about going to New York or you know looking what's happening in London. But they're not really relating to each other and to their environment. I want then, whilst Ed is away, I want just to begin to talk about the work itself. Because um, I, I, Elizabeth had told me that she'd seen this actually work. Um, this was, was actually the, the first of Eddie's work that I saw. And it's very striking, that's, that's easy to say. Um, one of the things that I was very much aware of right from the start was there's a photographic quality to many of these paintings. Um, but the more I look at them, the more I think, actually, it's not just photographic quality there's a sculptural quality to it as well. And it brings in the fact that, I think Eddie, was, Eddie has something of a classical training. Now, I think he went to the Beaux-Arts for a certain time, which is the French, the Belgians, they, they have this classical, the, 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 the Royal Academy, it's the same with, you know, you go to Nigeria and people are sending to Ghana, the Goldsmiths is going to teach in Ghana, all these kinds of things. There's a classical tradition going through. But I thought this, Elizabeth has hung this, um, 
it's, it's almost a kind of an Elgin marbles. I'm, I'm, I'm going to play with it now, just as an image. I see it, if you imagine the triangle here, you have a kind of a freeze. But look at the, the, pose, the, the pose over here, this lady with what is in fact a brush. But you can see classic dots. They're not anymore a form of communication between people of different groups uh, using the fabric as, uh, way, as a letter or as a document, not anymore. I mean, fabrics are printed in Indonesia and distributed globally by the Dutch, and you know, they circulate the world, and they're called African textiles, but they, are, they have many motifs that get repeated through the decades and mix in terms of color, coding, and all that. So identity is lost there. Yeah. 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 It becomes very complex. In general, it not, very complex. not all. I mean, what, what Chile is well, it's very Ghanaian. Yes. But you know, not everything is as clear cut. Yes. Yeah. yeah? But, so, so he he talks about that in a way yeah. as well. The global element, yeah. the fabric. But but I think I think what one of the things that strikes me is when you look at when you look at the African clock, whatever the case, in the in the old days, an African clock does, it has meaning, it has significance, yes, exactly. it gives a message. There's no doubt about that. Exactly. So even if you are a young quinoa and you're buying, well, you're buying for style. You're buying, but certain cloths have more value, and certain cloths, many of these cloths will have particular names. I think. But it struck me, the, the interesting one is the one through there, the lady with the crucifix, which again is a, is a, is a fascinating picture. If you look at the cloth itself, you realise that the cloth also has its own kind of language written into it. It's as though you can read, these are not the best ones, the one maybe behind, surely there. If you look at the red and yellows, those are, those are symbolic codes. Just as much as the kind of code that you see on the computer circuits. It's as though there's, there's, there are levels of written meaning. And the plots themselves almost appear, the way Eddie treats them sometimes, I think, is almost like another, another kind of language, another kind of coded message. So that the, the entire canvas becomes code flying across it, code on the bodies, maybe scarification codes, because I think the Mangbetu originally would have um, scarification, cicatrization, uh, and then codes in the language. It's, it's a coded world of hidden messages. Mm -hmm. The question here is knowledge systems. Isn't knowledge it? System. And one thing that modernity has done is to cancel modernity as it was badly used by the colonizers of the world. You know, that you know, the only knowledge is ours, we invented everything, and what you practice is just fetishism. And that erases everything be before them. I mean, in, in America, we have millenary cultures that has, we had written systems, astronomy, you know, medical knowledge, I mean, you name it. I mean, we have experts here, we can talk about that for hours, but also in Africa, of course, you know, the Egyptians, I mean, and many other Africans had systems of uh, writing systems. I mean, Malian textiles are, are codified, they're like books. Um, Ghanaian, you know, so the question is to decolonize that idea that there is no other knowledge as Western, the epistem of the West, yeah. So that, that's, that is one of the things that I am proud Young artists like Eddie are, are tackling, and I'm really interested in what they're doing. Maybe we see if there are questions from yes, the I know yes. we could go on a lot longer. Hi. Hi. I had um, two questions. Well, the answers, there was two questions. One is the the, the bananas, what, what, yeah, what yeah. they're about. I was, because, <laughs> and the other is when we were looking at it, my daughter and I, this one, um, the other thing that spoke to us was the cobalt, the coal tan, the whole viciousness of yeah, Western intervention yeah. in that respect, both in the colours and the coat. So I've, I've posed you, I've asked you a double question, which isn't good, but the bananas. I can't tell you about the bananas because I don't know where the banana. I, I don't know. I haven't asked them, so I have to be honest there. But the respect of minerals, of course, he's very aware of the course, the curse of of the mineral the greed of minerals in the Congo and many other parts of the world, in Colombia, could be the counterpart in, in our continent. 
But um, he's, he said very, he answered the question to, to, to a journalist that was very precise. He said, I am aware as a citizen of the, the peril of the exploitation of our natural resources, but I don't make work about that. So he's aware yeah. and, and he's, uh, he could activate some kind of thinking around it, but he's not doing it in the paintings. So maybe you see references in the color, but he's not talking about that. Yeah, it's a very Western look at it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. that is what we read about the Congo the time, is dystopian, isn't it? But the Congo is more than that, of course. Mm -hmm. And what Eve said the other day, that for me was the, the way that I to, to close it, of course, there's open two more questions, is that the hope isn't that the richness of Africa is not the natural resources, it's the people. Mm -hmm. People are the wealth of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I trust that they will get somewhere big because they are incredible. Yeah. There is so much talent and so much will to get beyond the past and what happened and not be victimized anymore. Yes, yes, yes. And I think I'd add to that too, this idea that, again, it's something that you mentioned the other day, that Eddie as an artist is also an excellent entrepreneur, mm -hmm. because and this is this is something that is part of the present. If you're an artist in the Congo today, you have to be able to promote yourself. And the way he has moved, obviously, it's with the help of people. But he's found those ways to get to London, and he's only he's what 24, 25, 25. He's 25. 25. This is this is this is this is exceptional talent, mm -hmm. and there are many other artists also trying those things, they're looking to move forward, to, to find a voice, to, 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 to speak to us like that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other things from the I'm sure you have questions coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. What's the thing about the bananas? Yes. Uh, several, uh, do you think back to Josephine Baker mm -hmm. and how she used bananas? Of course. Um, and somebody Miranda like Hassan Moussa has a whole series mm -hmm. of stories yes. about the bananas, in particular with visas, second class visas, no visas. Mm -hmm. He uses the banana as a, a metaphor for the, the bad way that contemporary Europeans are present, uh, people who are, are treating uh, Africans or people who are African, may live overseas. So it's a kind of strange symbol. You get the banana means leftover to yes. him as well. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about Eddie, but the fact that he's used the banana several times it caught my eye quite quickly, and that's now part of one of the icons or whatever you want to call it that's around in the uh, imagery of uh, contemporary art. Yeah. That you didn't see so much in the past. Fabric's been there for a long time. Well, both Josephine Baker, yes, you were quoted, who was ex self exoticizing in order to politicize her image, yes. because she was very aware yes. as an activist. Yes. She came from the Harlem Renaissance, she was very aware yes. of, of this. But also um, Carmen Miranda, who was very victimized by Hollywood, you know, she was the Brazilian sex symbol in the 1940s and became the Latina woman in Hollywood. And she was always appearing with a mountain of bananas in her head. You know, so bananas, she used to quote, she used to sing this song, Bananas is my business. <laughs> so banana is being a symbol, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not talking about this. I think it may have been a polyvocal symbol, yes, yes. but it's got something to do with degradation. Yeah. Yeah. And also in that sense. But we don't know if in that is. No, 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 no. no but I was going to say, was going to say in that sense, there is a. Um, Eddie is obviously not a what you call a political artist in that sense, in the sense that Sherry Sander, that they will have they will have text which explains what mm. they're talking about. But I think he, actually he obviously is. But the text has been hidden. You could read these as explanations as to what's going on, but mm. they, they, it's become visual symbol iconic. But it is obviously pointing to. He's trying to make us think about the complexity of all these things coming together. Well, the, there is an artist who is doing a very explicit conceptual work in photography, and Eve mentioned him the other day, Sami Baloji, also from Congo, is a photographer, but he works specifically on this idea of the minerals, uh, yes. scarification as a, as a reference to tradition, the minerals as a reference to the present and the past exploration of the Congo, etc. We had a question there, you had a question. Yeah. No, sorry, um, you had sort of started uh, talking about his creative process. Um, and I was wondering if it would sort of finish saying I didn't finish it. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, the conversation gets complicated. 
so they pose in the studio, the models with the drapery, with the with the fabrics. He takes photographs. <laughs> that was the part I was missing. And then he paints from the photographs as source material. So yeah, they are the, as you well know, the, the anthropological photography uh, source in, in some of the paintings, and obviously some other of the poses. Like that is definitely anthropological yes. source. Yes. Yes. That is a typical profile of the tribal person with an object in their hand. Yes. That also mirrors yes. uh, the tradition of European uh, portrait. painting, portrait. Yes. Um, and then the ones that are constructed as nar more complex narratives that are obviously composed in the studio, photographed and then painted. Mm -hmm. That's the process. I think you mentioned, sorry, I mentioned, you mentioned port portrait too. When I, when I interviewed you, I remember asking, uh, um, are those faces actually masked? And uh, he told me he's not that obsessed with masks but it's a, a black portrait and I asked him why because he said from his own research there is a, a lack of a, a, a black portraiture in the art history in general mm -hmm. and although he doesn't uh, engage with uh, uh, um, uh, black port uh, the portraiture the way uh, Lynette Boitier Yadion does it because I think she has more art, uh, a deeper knowledge of art history but he told me he has a lot of um, he used black faces because uh, if you pay attention to the uh, black history, there's a lack of representation of black portraits. That's why he has those faces also. That's one of the many explanations. Mm. You said you asked him if he was interested in masks? No, I asked him if he was interested in masks. Yeah, and he said he wasn't. No, he, he wasn't, but he just said that the, the, the fact that he has many black portraits is because yeah. uh, he felt that there is a lack of uh, strong representation of black portraits. Oh, yeah. And that was because you mentioned black portraits, and uh, that's something he is aware of. Yeah, of and you want to add this contribution to that. Yes, thank you. I was this. curious to know, in the process, at what stage they get titles, because some of them, a bit like this one, has got a huge... You, you could give it a title, but it doesn't, and that one does. So at what stage in the process? There, there's a title. That's what we need to ask him, I think. I know, yeah. but, but I, would, I would guess, because I didn't ask the question, but I would guess that in this particular case it's a very precise title, because for him this is a self-portrait. And he linked that proverb to the image <coughs> um, that he constructed to express that. So in a way it's an interpretation of a proverb. In other ones, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, the process of titling works for artists sometimes is quite painful. Mm. Yeah. They hate that moment and they yeah. have to title the yeah. work. And, yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's quite a cliche. Yeah. It is, but it's also a, a, artists hate defining things too much. They want to leave it open to interpretations. They want the freedom of the multiple meanings. You know, and yeah. if they put a title, they cannot. Silent, limited. Yet, yet at the same time, I always hate a, a, a thing that's called untitled. <laughs> <laughs> I know so many untitled paintings, and they're not all the same. But I think, you know, just when you look at the exhibition, most of it is painted in 2016. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so and then maybe even the later part of 2016. Yeah. So maybe some of these works might yet receive titles. Yes. You know, you, you, right. as an artist, you need to spend a little bit of time thinking about what that title may, might be. You know, in order to give it significance. Yeah. Yeah. So the two or three works we have as untitled might might have a title by the end of the year. He hasn't lived with this, yeah, yes. because yes, he, he painted them to he send left. them to London. I know. So he did. Right, you know. So he, was, he hasn't yeah. interacted with them. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That could well be. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I totally agree with that. Um, I've got a couple of questions. My first one is: um, in conversation, you want me to use the microphone? <laughs> of course. In conversation, <laughs> when
him, does he mention anything? I know you said he's not a political artist, but does he express any kind of message that he has that he wants to spread, obviously, around the world because his art is travelling? And my second question is, I know it's one flip-flop in the paintings all the time. Is there any significance with that? And last question. Oh, yeah, that um, was three. You yes, said two. Just one. <laughs> um, I wanted to also know if he, had, if he ever mentions anything about his spiritual beliefs and if that is ever portrayed in his paintings. Yes, well, it's all, it's all related in a way. Yeah. Yes, of course, he, he says he's not making paintings about the mineral exploitation and all that, but he's very concerned with that. Uh, he, say, he said to me the other day that there is a misinterpretation of progress in Africa, that progress is about wealth and economic development. But he said to me, what our leaders need is to put the emphasis in human rights and uh, social justice. He said, social justice is the sign of development, no investment only. And of course, you're getting so much investment, especially from Chinese government, that is developing, you know, Africa in terms of the infrastructure and taking away a lot of resources. We know about that. That is in the whole continent and this is growing. So they know now by experience in many countries that money only doesn't bring development. The development comes from a political and social way of uh, you know, implementing um, politics. So that's, that's his political stance. In terms of his spirituality, he's interested in researching the spirituality of the Luba people, his people, because he doesn't know it, because he was denied that knowledge. He was quite uh, vocal when, when we uh, were in Paris. Uh, we did a show in Paris in December, and it was my first encounter with him uh, after working with him for, for a while. And we talked about these things. And he said that this family is very Christian, as the majority of people in the Congo, and they are uh, very suspicious of going into any other spiritual cosmogony or systems and they don't encourage him at all to look at that but he's going to develop some kind of research but he's a christian he's not practicing christian but he is a christian and the third flip one was the flip-flop flip the flip-flop yeah. flip -flop was a, a support for his painting um, at the beginning when he didn't have money for canvases he was painting um, flip-flops and, and uh, skateboards. skateboards and then he started making flip-flops um, with materials constructing them in a, in a larger scale and painting them as well so that was it was important to him i guess it's like you know people use a lot of flip-flops and they are all over in markets and is that just i was just curious as to why it's always one can I just, I, I've got an idea about that. Wow. I think it's, I think it's, um, I think it's a, a, a painterly trick, so to say, because it's almost like a highlight. Can you ask him about the flip Yes. Can you move it back? Is that good C'est super, c'est que tu es venu parce qu'on était en train de finir et on a une question pour, deux questions à te poser. Ok. Ok, je sais, est-ce que tu peux euh, allumer ta caméra Voilà. Fantastique. Alors, il y a deux questions. Une question, c'est pourquoi la banane Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire Ok. Euh, je pense que euh, la banane, en fait, j'ai été euh, fasciné par ça euh, lors de ma visite chez, euh, chez les Mangwitu. Alors, Mangwitu, euh, chez les Mangwitu, ils ont une très forte tradition euh, du banane. Pour eux, les, les bananes, c'est euh, un fruit sacré, en fait. Pour eux, euh, la banane, c'est euh, euh, quelque chose de, de quotidien. C'est quelque chose qu'ils mangent en fait, chaque jour, en fait, le matin, à midi et puis le soir. Euh, pour eux, c'est toute une tradition en fait. Et alors, ça m'a ça poussé à, à me poser des questions, à la manière dont la banane 
nous t'a merci dans les restes du monde et comment est-ce qu'ils aperçoivent la, la, la banane depuis des décennies en fait. Alors j'ai voulu euh, interroger un peu cette banane euh, à travers euh, cette série Mango et tout, et en même temps euh, à m'ouvrir dans le reste du monde, comment est-ce que la banane est aperçue, essayer de, de mettre en confrontation cette, euh, cette différence, cette différence de voir les choses entre. Euh, entre ces peuples et tout euh, et nous, euh, je dirais, euh, les gens modernes, en fait. Alors, pour moi, c'était très important de, de questionner cette banane. Et voilà pourquoi la présidente dit banane dans, dans cette série. Ok, ok, ok. Ok, merci. On va traduire et après, je te demande une, une dernière question. Ok, so he says, he says actually, actually once, once I was with the Mangbetu, I, I was conscious of the fact that they treat that, that, that there are bananas everywhere. It, it's, it's absolutely ubiquitous. <laughs> and that they eat bananas morning, afternoon, and evening. But they consider it almost as a kind of a sacred fruit. So he's saying that then, in fact, when you think about what the banana means to us, it's, a, it's, it's absolutely nothing, it's something we eat every so often. He, I was interested to, to ask myself the question, well, how can, uh, it's about the different ways that we see things. And I wanted to put the banana into the portraits to show that whilst something that we see as banal and uninteresting, from another point of view can be seen as, to if, if you understand how they use it, it's, it's, it's a sacred object, it's absolutely fascinating. So he, again, he's talking about the, the plurality of points of view, okay. and that he wants the person who sees something which they don't understand, the banana, not to imagine that it's banal, but to try to read themselves into a frame where actually that could be an object of great spiritual life. Yeah. Um, the sandals, the sandals. The sandals. The babouche. And the babouche also, we asked why there's always a babouche. Some more. Some more. C'est toute une histoire. Et euh, bon, voilà, pour commencer. Allô Oui, oui, je, je suis là seulement que j'ai coupé la caméra. Ok. Je dirais que euh, euh, c'est toute une histoire parce que ce qui a fait ma mère, c'est euh, une vanaise en fait des babouches. Alors, du coup, euh, j'ai suis né et j'ai trouvé ma mère en train de vendre ses babouches en fait. Alors, j'ai grandi, j'ai été éduqué avec l'argent de ses commerces. Et euh, parce qu'à l'époque, mon père, c'était quelqu'un de très alcoolique, donc il ne prenait pas vraiment soin de nous parce qu'il passait tout son temps dans, dans le bar. Alors pour moi, en grandissant, j'ai réalisé cela. Et euh, du fait que j'ai passé tout le temps avec ma mère quand elle vendait ses babouches, alors quand j'ai commencé à pratiquer des l'art, j'ai commencé alors à l'époque à peindre sur des babouches. Alors j'ai vraiment commencé à dessiner sur des babouches que j'ai récupérées dans la vie. Pour moi, c'était une manière de rendre hommage à ma mère. Et euh, je pense que c'est euh, la même euh, ouverture d'esprit que, euh, euh, que j'ai continué avec sur euh, mes toiles. Donc c'est une façon pour moi de rendre hommage à ma mère pour, euh, pour, euh, pour euh, ses sacrifices, euh, nous élever à travers euh, ses commerces et ses dents. Ok. So he's saying that when, 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 when he grew up, um, his, his mother used to sell sandals. Market. In the market, and his father, he gives a little bit of, of, of information. His father was an alcoholic. He used to go out to the bars. He would drink an awful lot. So as he was growing up, he realized that he only had money because of the sacrifices of his mother, who was working to keep the family together. So the sandals come into his paintings as a kind of a, uh, to render homage to his mother. And that's, that's how the symbol continues to, to develop. But he decided to put it into the paintings just to recognize the sacrifice of his mother. Also, he mentioned that he used to paint flip flops at some point, which I had referred to. But yeah, they become like a homage. Yeah. Any more questions for him now that you love him? If? No? <laughs> more questions? He wants to, be, you want to reinforce his use of classical sculpture Sorry. with the Beaux Arts yes, yes, issue. Yes. If he's getting some, certainly yes. some of these are looking yes. very Roman. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, um, on parlant ici, on voit un peu dans dans les poses de, de ces portraits. Um, il y a un, une peinture récente qui n'est qui, uh, qui pas de titre, et c'est la femme avec une brosse. Et, mais la forme est, est d'une certaine façon tout à fait classique. 
Alors, on se demandait où vous avez trouvé ces, 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 ces fonds sculpturales classiques. Est-ce que c'est quelque chose que, que, que vous y mettez euh, exprès ou c'est quelque chose qui sort Ok. Euh, je voudrais dire que pour moi, réaliser, euh, réaliser cette, cette, cette entière pour euh, cette exposition, c'était pour moi un gros, euh, un gros combat. Et euh, j'ai mené beaucoup de recherches et je pense que euh, j'ai toujours été euh, très euh, fasciné euh, par la peinture classique euh, depuis, euh, depuis les beaux-arts. Mais sauf que j'ai voulu, euh, voulu euh, dépasser en fait, mes limites en fait. Et euh, vous allez remarquer dans, dans, dans les restes des peintures, il y a plus des formes un peu euh, typiquement euh, traditionnelles. <rire> des femmes euh, au Congo, oui. si je peux dire. Mais celle-là, c'est une peinture que j'ai euh, essayé un peu d'interroger cette peinture classique par rapport à, par rapport à cet, art, euh, cet art traditionnel ou euh, cet art contemporain, si je peux dire, euh, que je suis en train d'exercer de, 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 euh, actuellement. Parce que la même ouverture que j'ai euh, quand je me retrouve dans, dans, le musée, euh, dans le musée de Louvre ou dans le musée occidental, c'est euh, le même esprit d'ouverture que j'ai euh, quand je suis ici à Kinshasa, quand je rencontre euh, des gens euh, qui, sont, qui sont trop liés avec euh, la tradition. Et pour moi, j'ai voulu en fait euh, mettre tout, euh, tout, euh, tout les dés ensemble à travers cette peinture. Et si je l'ai laissé un titre, c'est parce que j'ai voulu laisser un peu la liberté au public de, 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 en fait, de développer cette idée euh, de l'air maniaque, de l'air façon, comment est-ce qu'ils aperçoivent pas, pas les choses, comment est-ce qu'ils aperçoivent l'art, comment est-ce qu'ils qu aperçoivent l'art en Europe ou en Afrique. Alors, cette peinture, pour moi, c'est une partie vraiment très ouverte par rapport à, par rapport à cette exposition. Et euh, donc, je l'ai fait pour moi, moi d'utiliser ces, ces, ces positions typiquement de l'art classique occident, occidental et euh, en même temps d'essayer de, de, de mettre beaucoup des éléments euh, typiquement traditionnels euh, au Congo. Une façon pour moi de, de laisser cette ouverture aux gens, d'avoir leur propre interprétation par rapport à, par rapport à cette peinture. Et je me disais que ça allait être très important que je sois présent à mes jours de vernissage pour effectivement voir les réactions des gens par rapport à, à cette peinture. Mais malheureusement, je n'étais pas au fait. Ok, ok. Um, so, just, just to exactly. Um, yeah. As we were saying, he, he, of course, he's very aware of the classical tradition, both from having learnt it, I think, at, at, at art school. Also, I think you'll be in Paris to the Louvre together, you'll be to the British Museum together, and in these places, he's seen classical representations of classical um, Western sculpture in Rome and, and, and Greek and so on. But he's saying that one of the things that fascinates him, therefore, is to is to take that stream, that strand, and to put it together, because when he sees traditional groupings and so on and so forth. He's aware of the, the continuity of pose and, and so on that he sees around him. And he, he wants to put those two together. He wants to put those two inside the same frame. And with this one, the untitled one, he's saying, actually, he, he really did want the audience to try to unpick that and to give it a title for themselves. That's one of the things. He, you leave to the audience the, the, um, where to put their own weight down, where to come down to, and, and, to, and to decide. And there's one last thing at the end, see if I can get it quickly. Um, basically, yeah, but that was about it. But there's one more to add in. I'd like to later. Um, any more? Any more questions? Because you've got him now. Just to say Just that I think it's the most dramatic painting that I've seen very recent. That, that, was the, that was the other thing that he said at the end. He said he was really sorry not to have been here for the, for the opening, because one of the things that's important to him as an artist is to see the reaction of people to his paintings. La dame vient de dire que c'est l'une des peintures sont les plus dramatiques qu'elle a vues dans un long temps. It says to him that on the 30th of June also. in London yesterday, the statue of Mary Seacole, the Crimean War nurse, 
Scottish Jamaican was unveiled in St. Thomas's Hospital. That's why I wasn't here for the opening, but today I am here to see your painting. Well, that's an important wonderful. thing. Yes, yeah. another important thing. On the 30th of, of June. Do you want to try that? Uh, don't, don't. Elle a dame ici dit que le 30 juin, ici à Londres, qu'elle a raté le vernissage, mais il y avait une, une raison, et c'est que il y avait um, une, une statue qui était um, dévoilée dans un hôpital ici, de Mary Sico, et c'est une, une nourrice très très importante qui était écossais, car, euh, écossais et des Caraïbes. Jamaïcaine. Jamaïcaine. Et donc, um, elle, elle était très importante en tant que nurse pendant la guerre de Crimée. Donc, elle, elle, a, elle a attendu cet euh, événement, elle n'était pas capable de venir, et elle, elle est très contente de me rencontrer ici. Et là, il y a Thierry qui te dit bonjour aussi. Bonjour. Je pense, je pense Thierry, elle est la patronne de la maison, elle t'attend, elle a dit que c'est absolument important que tu viennes voir. Parce qu'on parlait un peu de, de ton impulse. Tu, as, tu, as, tu te dévoues à la communauté, tu travailles beaucoup en collaboration. Et cette maison, cet endroit où on est maintenant, la galerie, est né d'un collectif d'artistes, un collectif de jeunes gens qui sont venus occuper cette maison il y a 30 ans et qui a encore continué avec un esprit de communauté. Alors c'est très important que tu viennes la voir et rester ici avec elle. Et je pense que peut-être nous pouvons terminer. Je pense que nous montrons notre appréciation à... Yes! <laughs>